Okay, so we're here for part four of the upgraded launch series. In this one, we're going to turn it into a thermal imager. For those of you that haven't used the thermal imager before, uh, these are really great diagnostic tools for certain faults. Some of the things you can fault find with thermal images are brakes staying on or not working, heated seats, parasitic drain, engine misfires, blocked radiators, blocked exhausts, many more. Um, it's one of those tools you probably won't use often, but sometimes, uh, you know, in the right situation, it can save you a lot of time where a, where a thermal imager is required. It's a great little addition to the launch pad, and the best thing is you can even use it on your smartphone. So I got this little Fleur Pro from Amazon for 343 Australian dollars delivered. I chose the USB-C connector because I've got a Samsung phone with a USB-C connection, so I can use it on my phone if I like. Now, the launch pad has a micro USB connector, so I ordered a OTG USB-C to micro USB adapter, which is the perfect size to be able to fit it through the protective surround on the launch pad up here. Now, in order to use this, um, let's just run through it. All you have to do is download the Fleur One app, which is very simple. I'm not going to show you to do that because it's readily available on the store. Um, so open it up. Let's open the Fleur One app. So let's turn on the thermal imager by holding the button down at the bottom. It'll flash for a little bit until it turns solid green. Once it turns solid green, then we know it's ready to run. So let's wait for that. Okay, flashing green means it's ready to run. So we just plug on our little connector. What you need to realize is that actual unit itself is naturally meant to sit like this on the bottom of your phone, which means it's facing a certain way. Now on the launch pad, the connector is at the top. So that means this will have to be upside down, but we can easily fix that. I'll show you how to do that right now. So let's plug it in at the top. It's obviously upside down now. There we go. It's doing a self calibration. So all you have to do, I've already done this because I did this yesterday, but if we go to settings, go down to image rotation, it's automatically set to zero, but being upside down, we just change it to 180 and it is ready to go. So it's pretty simple and you just move it around and we'll go out to a car and we'll, we'll test it out and we'll see how well it works and how well we can see through it with the picture overlay. The other good thing with this, with, um, with the app being on the actual unit itself, you can do a few things. If you press that button there, you can do a time-lapse video, you can just take photos, you can do an actual normal video, and there's a few other options. It's got timers, you can, you can turn the actual temperature degree on, on or off. Now, there's a few other options you can muck around with when you get it, but um, what I'll do is we'll, we'll go out to a car, we'll test a few things and we'll see how well it works. Just had this car running for a little bit. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Just don't know if you can see all the hot spots around. And obviously the best thing about this is you've got the picture overlay, so it's actually very, very handy to see exactly what you're looking at if something is a little bit hot. Let's see if we can go a little bit in, further in. So here's a uh, diesel Volkswagen Caddy. You can really see the detail of all the injectors and the pipes. I can see that very well. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can, but um, you can see the detail very, very well. This car's been running for a bit, so everything's gonna be a little bit warm already. Let's see what's hot in the fuse box. You can certainly see what's going on there. Right, aim that directly on that relay, that's 54 degrees, move it away, 33 degrees. 
so we can see what's going on there. That looks good, the, the clear picture directly through is, is fantastic. Alright, we're inside, we're going to see if we can see what's going on with the vents. We've got the aircon on, had it on for a while, so let's point it up and uh, have a look. We can see they're nice and cool. Yes, that's only reading about 13 degrees, but you know, I'm not really sure. I haven't used this for long enough to know what the actual offset is. Um, but anyway, we know it's cold. It's showing cold in the actual picture itself, so you know the aircon's working. And I guess if we get a rough gauge on, on what the offset is, then we'll know how to actually read that properly and we might be able to diagnose uh, air conditioning issues without a thermometer. All right, guys, I know it's a little noisy around here, but we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna use our infrared thermometer and our other handheld thermal imager, and then we're gonna try out the FLIR one to see what the difference is between the two. So let's give it a go and see what happens. So I'm hoping you can see that. That's currently 60, 60, 60-ish. So I'll go get the other thermal imager. So that is reading about 64, 63. And there's the Fleur and it's reading 59, 60, 61. So I'd say it's pretty damn accurate. We're very happy with that. Great little tool. And obviously the greatest thing about it is you can see the outlay of everything. If you saw that last thermal image I put up, couldn't really see much, but you can clearly see detail into this car very very well all right guys I just want to show you a quick example on this aircon unit so I just want to show you how actually real really close to accurate this thing is um, I've got my thermometer in there and it's about eight degrees and I'm obviously looking with the thermal imager and he's also around eight degrees. Well, it's hovering around that mark where, you know, where, if I move it around that vent, but that is very, very close to actual, you know, accurate temperature. So um, you probably didn't even need the thermometer. You could probably just definitely do this check without the thermometer. But obviously, you know, when you start using this tool, you probably do want to, you know, get a, get a gauge on how close it is to actual temperature before you start relying on it completely but um, there's a really good example of how close it is. Here you can see the wiring under the kick panel and the uh, actual side trim here that um, is glowing hot because I've got a few things on still so what I'll do is I'll turn everything off and I'll let it sit for a little bit and we'll see if that cools down we'll come back to the same spot. That car's been sitting for about 10 minutes I've just opened the door and nothing is hot under that trim anymore so this is a pretty good tool there is a little bit of background noise with everything looks a little bit warm so we really got to get used to the actual use of this but the more you use it the more you get used to it and it is still a really handy tool so uh, if you have got any questions please shoot them through and once again I'm not an expert on this so I'm using these things for the first time too um, on this particular app itself um, yeah Look, see what you think. You guys probably need to get one yourself to, you know, to get used to it. But um, it's certainly a handy tool when you need it. Thanks for uh, having a look at this video.